Hi, I'm Dr. Gus Crothers. I'm the National Medical Director at Groups Recover Together. I'm also an addiction medicine specialist. And uh, I'm here to talk to you today about addiction as a chronic disease. And then specifically, I'm gonna teach you about the three-legged stool of how we treat and manage addiction. And I'm gonna answer one of those burning questions that I get and talk about all day, every day when talking to patients, which is how long do I need to be on my medications? How long do I need to be in treatment? And I'm gonna walk you through how we think, think, that, think about that and answer it. So the, the, most of, the first thing to remember when we get started is that addiction is a chronic disease, meaning we don't have a quick cure. Instead, it's a disease that tends to follow a relapsing and remitting course, meaning that sometimes in your life it's gonna be really active and causing a ton of problems, then there'll be other times in your life when it's more under control and more in the background. But if we don't pay attention to it and we don't control it, it's gonna to continue to do this and flare up. And it's only if we you know, uh, actively treat it and actively manage it that we can keep it in remission and keep it from running or sometimes even ruining our lives. So now I'm gonna talk about how we do that and how we keep addiction in remission, how we keep it under control is with the three-legged stool of chronic disease management. And I'm gonna walk you through each, each of those three legs. And importantly, these same three legs apply whether we're talking about other chronic diseases like you know, depression or uh, asthma or diabetes or low back pain. The same principles apply and they also apply to addiction. And what they are is medications, therapy, and lifestyle changes. So let's start with medications. Um, for treating opioid addiction specifically, there's three medications that are FDA approved and that have strong evidence for really helping. Those are methadone, buprenorphine, sometimes called suboxone, and naltrexone. I'm not gonna walk you through all three. I'm gonna focus on buprenorphine or suboxone because that's what we prescribe most of the time here at groups. But the idea behind suboxone is that, you know, when you're using opioids, when you're, when you're in that active phase of opioid addiction, you're taking opioids, they're wearing off. You're taking opioids, they're wearing off. And your brain, your brain chemistry, your physiology is going through these crazy highs and lows, craving withdrawal, craving withdrawal. And it's incredibly taxing on your brain. It's incredibly taxing on your body. And there's really not much else you can focus on. It hijacks your circuitry. It hijacks your decision making. And it doesn't matter how much you want to work on counseling or how much you want to work on lifestyle changes. You really don't stand much of a chance when your brain's going through these crazy highs and lows. So the point of the medication is to stabilize all of that. You take Suboxone, it occupies your opioid receptors, it blocks other opioids, and it smooths out that brain physiology. And it lets you feel normal, <clears throat> get your thoughts back, get your motivation back, get, you know, get, and frankly, buys you the time to work on the counseling and work on the lifestyle changes. So now let's move over to those other two. So moving on to number two, talking about counseling or therapy, I mean those terms interchangeably. The, the point of counseling is to focus on the psychological aspects of addiction as well. Psychology always plays a role in addiction. It's different for every person. For some people, it's a history of trauma. For other folks, it's some underlying depression or anxiety. For other folks, it's maybe just some maladaptive or unhelpful thought patterns that kind of reinforce the drug use or, or reinforce the cravings. No matter what, everyone has some role of psychology contributing to their addiction. And the Suboxone, or any of the medications, frankly, don't do anything for those underlying psychological issues. And, and that's what counseling is for. Counseling is there to work through those issues, help you pro process them, and ultimately help you learn effective strategies for dealing with them. Now, there's a lot of ways someone can get counseling. At groups, we do weekly group-based counseling, which we think is really effective. But there's other versions. There's you know, individual counseling. There's residential counseling. There's counseling out in the community, like Narcotics Anonymous or Alcoholics Anonymous. And frankly, the way you get counseling isn't as important as just the fact of whether or not you're engaging with it. Um, and now let's move on to the third leg of the stool, and that is lifestyle changes. Now, this is oftentimes the leg of the stool that's overlooked, but it's really critical to focus on it. Because remember, you take your medication once a day, maybe you think about it for five minutes and you're done. You're counseling, maybe you're doing it an hour a day, an hour a week, but whatever, you're done the rest of the hours of the week, you're just living your life. And so if you don't live your life in a way that's, that's healthy and, and, actually, and reinforcing for your recovery, you're putting yourself at risk. So for some people, that's, you know, certain people, places, or things that might trigger them or cause them to relapse. For other people, maybe that's a stressful job or um, a destructive relationship that they're, that they're in. Again, it's different for every person, but everyone has lifestyle factors that either put them at risk for relapse and for their addiction or protect them and, and really enhance their recovery. And it's critical that you make changes to your lifestyle to shift you from that, those risky patterns over to those protective patterns. But let's be honest, making lifestyle changes is hard. We're all human beings. I haven't met a single human being 
who's good at making lifestyle changes quickly. The faster you make a change, the more likely it, it's, it is to not stick around and for you to just go back to what you're doing before. So for, you know, for anyone to make durable, long lasting lifestyle changes, it takes months, frankly, usually it takes years to really make changes that stick. And so, you know, putting this all together and looking at the three legs of the stool together, uh, the, it's critical. Uh, the reason I use the stool analogy is because a three legged stool is stable, right? It doesn't matter if one of the legs is a little shorter than the other, it still, it still you know, isn't wobbling, it sits straight. But if you take one of the legs away, if you take away the medication, or if you take away the counseling, or if you take away the lifestyle changes, the stool gets wobbly and it's likely to fall over. And in this analogy, falling over is like relapsing and, and letting that addiction kind of take over your life again. So the critical point I make to people is, you know, it's, if you want the best chance of recovery, you need to have all three legs of the stool. You need to be using medications. You need to be using counseling. You need to be making lifestyle changes to really help you work on that recovery. And if you're going to reduce the role of one of those legs of the stool, say, for example, if you're going to taper down your medications, you better make sure that the other two legs of the stool are really stable and really firmly in place before you start doing that. And if you want to totally remove one leg of the stool, you know, if you want to someday come off your medications or someday just totally eliminate counseling from your life, well, then you really better make sure that the legs of that stool are really wide and really stable so that it's, you know, it's a firm place for you to sit and not fall over and, and relapse. So, you know, the burning question I get every day from, from, from patients is how long do I need to be on this medication or how long do I need to keep coming to, to counseling? And the answer I give is as long as you need to, to get you to a place where, you know, you've made really stable lifestyle changes, you feel really stable in your, your recovery and you feel really safe about slowly tapering down the role of, of that leg of the stool, whether that's tapering down your medication, whether that's, uh, you know, reducing the counseling or, 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 or both together. Our staff at groups, our doctors, our counselors, our, our care navigators, everyone, we're all experts in helping talk you through and understand when you're ready to start um, you know, reducing or, or, or changing the balance of those three legs in your treatment. But the number one take home message here is, you, know, you wanna have all three legs of those stools um, working for you at all times if you want the best chance of recovery. So thanks for listening today. Again, I'm Dr. Gus Crothers, um, and I wish you best of luck in your recovery and with your health.